So I'm recording. Um, what I'm going to do is I will share my screen. And I said I in the email that I would just start off by talking about that scientific method experiment um, or assignment or whatever. So I'll just start off by kind of um, just talking about my example. And then if somebody wants to share theirs, they can. Hopefully somebody will share. But we can just talk about it a little bit. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to introduce the lab. Uh, I haven't put up the recording yet for that, but I will by tomorrow. But I'm going to just tell you guys exactly what, what's going, what to expect so that you guys know, okay? Um, hi, Eloise. How are you? Hi, thank you. Hi. So it, we, we were just starting off just um, asking questions or anything like that um, before we get started. Otherwise, I'm going to move on to the scientific method act, uh, assignment. Okay, sounds good. Thank okay. you. All right, so let me share my screen and we will go from there. And actually, I'll probably show you a few things just on Moodle just to make sure everything's clear before I go into that scientific method experiment, actually. Um, oh, there we go. I don't know why I can't see share screen. It's huge. What are you doing, Mace? Are you guys going downstairs? Okay. All right, you guys can see my screen, I assume. Um, all right, what happened here? Go away. Okay, so just, just a couple things. I just wanna make sure we're clear on kind of what's due and what needs to be done. If anyone has questions about that, let me know. Um, but uh, just kind of to start, right, that syllabus quiz, I basically, it's, if you haven't done it yet, there's a couple people who haven't. By the end of the day today, it needs to be done. Otherwise, it's a zero. It's silly to get a zero on the syllabus quiz. Um, it's really silly to get a zero on anything. So make sure you guys are keeping up with the assignments. I did put up, right, the chapter one, the recorded lecture for chapter one. And for chapter two, I will also be putting up that chapter three recorded lecture today, probably like an hour after we get off or so. I already recorded the first part of it. It'll be divided into two parts. Um, and then, as I just said before, I will be uploading a, um, a video demo of this lab, okay? So I'll talk about that kind of as the last thing I'm gonna talk about, okay? So are there any other questions pertaining to chapters one and two or any comments or anything like that um, that you want me to clarify before I move on just to talk about that scientific method assignment? Nothing? Okay. Um, again, remember, you need to be keeping up on the assignments. This is a six week course. There's lots of material to cover. You're getting full credit for lecture and lab. It's a lot of work. It's not, it's not just like, you just log in here and there whenever you kind of feel like it, that's not gonna work out, okay? So I just wanna put that out there and make sure we're all aware of that. Um, keep up on the assignments. The assignments are there to make sure you're reviewing the material because it is a lot of material. Um, and so if you wait until the exam to like look at the lectures and don't really listen to the recorded lectures, it's, it's, not, it's not gonna be a good scene, okay? So make sure, um, again, you're listening to the recorded lectures, doing the assignments, you know, based on kind of the timing that I have laid out in the syllabus. All right. Does anyone have questions about any of that and when things are due or anything like that? No. All right. So if something comes up, let me know. So let's just look at this uh, scientific method assignment um, just because I think it's kind of fun um, to do, but maybe that's just because I'm nerdy. But anyway, um, let me just pull up that document that has my example, talk a little bit about it. And if somebody wants to share theirs, or if somebody has a question about it, just let me know, okay? <clears throat> it's coming, I think. All right, so one, um, did you guys find that this was difficult to do? I guess that's my first question to, to you guys. Anyone find it kind of difficult? Because a lot of times when we do this in class, I do have to spend a decent amount of time kind of helping the groups out, um, because it's kind of hard to really hone in and, and, and um, and come up with something. So what do you guys think about it? Yeah, I felt like at first it was kind of difficult to think of like an example other than yours, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. Okay, but then you eventually sort of came up with something? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's not 
an assignment I've had in other classes necessarily. So it just like took a second to kind of like get in that mindset of like thinking of a new experiment. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. That's probably going to be the most difficult part because you guys haven't designed an experiment before. Right. And so, um, and, and like I said, there is no right or wrong answer here. It's kind of like just to get us thinking, right? Like how would I do something like that? Um, Alicia, what did you think? I didn't think it was bad because like I already had a topic on my mind, but I don't know like what you'll think about it, but I'll share it after you. Okay. Okay, cool. And then I'll go back obviously and grade them uh, as well. So anyway, just to kind of stop you guys see my example here, you read it obviously before you made your example. Um, the reason why I have this topic because it's something that we study in the lab, right? Um, in terms of the observation. Ooh. There's some rebounding there. In terms of the observations, um, those really could be anything. It could just be like something you read, right? It, it, it doesn't, it can come from you hearing something in the news kind of thing, or it could be something that you actually firsthand observed. It could be kind of anything like that, right? So I have here patients who have PTSD also have chronic pain, right? Which is called a comorbidity. Um, and this is something that um, you can read about in the literature. It's something that we, you see actually in veterans, right? And so from clinical, um, maybe not clinical studies, but studies in veterans um, uh, that are treated at the VA, if you kind of compile data, it, it's been shown that there is this comorbidity, right? So that's where that comes from. Um, and also, if you have chronic pain, a lot of times you're treated with opiate drugs, right? Like morphine, okay? Um, and so therefore you have PTSD and you're treated with this opiate, there might be something there, right? So that's where then the hypothesis comes from. And remember the hypothesis really is just a statement now, um, right? So simple, chronic opiate treatment leads to the development of PTSD symptoms, right? Meaning that um, the, the, the opiate treatment, the drug that you're taking may actually be causing some of those PTSD symptoms, right? So again, simple statement, and then, um, so it kind of is a prediction. So like, if you listen to the um, chapter one lecture when, when I'm talking about the scientific method, it kind of says, all right, you make a hypothesis and then a prediction and then the experiment based on that prediction. Really the hypothesis kind of is the sort of the prediction. Um, but I guess the prediction part of it is more specific to what you think is gonna happen in your experiment, okay? So anyway. My experiment involves animal models, right? Because we do animal research. Um, you could probably think of an experiment that you could do this in humans, right? Um, but so anyway, it's to treat the animals with opiates, right? And then test them behaviorally to see if they exhibit some of these PTSD symptoms or they, they show some of these behaviors that, um, that you see in PTSD, okay? And so it's super important that in your experiment, you have a control group, right? Versus an experimental group. Um, so if you, again, keep it simple. Um, and so I have here one behavior that can be tested is something called avoidance behavior. So in anxiety disorders in general, in PTSD, something that you, you may see is, is something called avoidance, meaning um, you're going to avoid a situation that might remind you of that traumatic experience that sort of triggered or initiated this sort of PTSD. Um, even if you don't have PTSD in an anxiety disorder um, in general, you also see this, right? You're not going to go to the food store because you're scared um, that you might pass out because maybe one time you pass out in the food store, right? It could, it could be anything, but something that's going to avoid and get in the way of your daily life, right? So that's my um, example. Obviously more elaborate probably than what maybe you guys came up with, but it doesn't matter. It's just meant to get you thinking about it. How, how, you know, what, how would you design an experiment? All right, so who wants to share theirs? And again, remember, there's no right or wrong answer. Um, it's just, again, this is just an exercise meant to get you guys thinking um, like a scientist, okay? Alicia, you want to go, you want to share? Yeah, I'll share mine. All right, cool. <laughs> you don't have to. No, no, I have no problem sharing it. All right, cool. Okay, so my topic was dogs and the spread of COVID. Okay. Um, my observations were some dogs have tested positive already. Mm -hmm. The dogs that have tested positive also had an owner that tested positive, mm -hmm. and the virus seems to be less severe in dogs. So my hypothesis was dogs can be linked to the spread of COVID. So okay. my experiment would be to isolate two groups and expose one of the groups to the dogs that have COVID, 
and then both of the groups should be isolated and then within 14 days determine if the one group of patients that were exposed to the dog would display symptoms of the virus or test positive as asymptomatic carriers. Uh -huh. Cool. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome, right? Obviously super relevant. Um, I think your experiment is well thought out, right? And you have those two groups. Um, and there's really no confounding factors within kind of the way you set it up. So I think that's a, that's a great example. Good job. Anyone else want to share? Like I said, no pressure. You don't have to. Um, if we were in class, I would make you guys do it, but you guys are lucky because we're not, we're not really live in class. So um, anyone else want to share? I'll share mine. Thank you. Go ahead. Um. My scientific topic was life on other planets. Okay. And two observations I made were that there have been discoveries of planets that seem like they could have supported life or can support life. Okay. And that there's proof that Mars could have once supported life. Mm -hmm. And my hypothesis is pretty much that there is life on other planets. And um, I mean, my experiment was to test my theory that there's life on other planets uh, I would send out like remotely operated spaceships with rovers to keep exploring planets that we can reach and try to find proof of life. Okay. So what would you actually try to find? What would you, what would you be looking for? I mean, like, uh, things that like people couldn't have at the planet, like, like water and like sources of food and stuff like that. And like okay. what the temperature is and yeah, good. Um, so that's good. I mean, that's totally different than my example, totally different than Alicia's example. Good example. Um, it kind of pertains to the introduction, right, to chapter two, I guess, that chemistry chapter, which, yeah, so good job. Awesome. Uh, anyone else want to share? All right, cool. So um, also, if you haven't handed this, submitted this, make sure you do. Um, it's, it was due already or it's due today. Um, all right, guys, I think you did a good job on that. Like I said, I will, those of you who didn't share, I'll still look at your um, examples. And if I have any feedback, I'll give it to you. But to be honest, there's really no right or wrong answer. It's really just a me meant to be an exercise to get us thinking, right? And to think about using the scientific method. Um, and I did see that, say this in the lecture, right? Like, you know, the scientific method isn't just something you talk about like in grammar school or in high school or in college as undergrads. It is used by scientists, right? If you don't really though we don't say I did this step and I did this step, we're always using that scientific method. And if you don't really follow it, then you're going to be a crappy scientist, right? And you're probably going to get crappy data. Um, so it is something that is sort of important for us to, to talk about. Um, all right. So one, one other thing kind of tying into this. So you guys, so say you guys did your experiments, right? Um, what you would collect some data and then what would you do next? If we sort of follow along kind of in the, the scientific process, what would be next? Um, once we collected the data, like make a graph, I guess. Then we yeah, you got it. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, make our conclusion based on our findings. Okay, And good. then I guess to publish and share the data. Okay, good. Yep, yep. What else? What else kind of along with the data? So, so Alicia said you make a graph, right? You, you're going to present that data in some way that's going to be, you know, clear and it's going to represent what you know, what happened in that experiment. Um, and then, yeah, you put it together, you publish it so you can share it with other scientists. What's something else you need to do to that data um, before you publish it? It's a math thing. Statistical analysis? Yeah, statistics, right? Um, it's a big, it is a big thing. Um, you know, you, you, do, you do an experiment, you have data, you have to actually prove and show that your um, difference between your, say, experimental group and your control group is st statistically significant, right? If it's not, then it's really not a difference, right? And so um, it's a way of kind of standardizing and, um, and making sure or determining sort of how different things are, right? And then that, that's gonna impact your conclusion. Um, so that's one big thing. So sometimes, I don't know, and that's not something that we do now. Um, really, even in my upper level classes, we'll do a little bit of statistics, but that's really like hardcore statistics in, in science is really something that you kind of focus on more in graduate school. I mean, everyone takes the statistics course, um, but not as an undergrad, not necessarily a biostatistics 
um, course, but it's worth mentioning um, for us to sort of just know that you have to do that. All right, so that's pretty much um, it. I just wanted, I just, again, I like to do this because I think it's fun um, and it kind of just gets us thinking about science in general. Um, and hopefully um, we're all in this course we have because we have some interest in, in science, right? Um, all right, so I'm gonna move on unless anyone has any other questions. Yeah? All right, so let me just introduce what we're gonna do for the lab. There's one thing that I kind of want to show you um, first. And then, like I said, I am going to put up a video. So I will see how this works out, right? I'm gonna video myself, essentially doing what you guys would do. Let me get rid of this. Um, why is that doing that? Uh-oh, I might've got rid of, okay. Um, so that's my plan. So, all right, this is the first time I'm kind of doing it this way. Um, and we'll see how it works. And if it doesn't really work out and I and I and and we think it's better to find like some other kind of simulated labs or something like that, we'll do that. But I, I feel like this might be the best way to go about it. So if you guys look here under the lab port, right, the little lab tab on Moodle, um, you can see this, the first assignment that's here is this metric system lab assignment, okay? So that's, that's separate from this other assignment that's here. So you need to do both of them, okay? So this first assignment, there is just a PDF Oh, is there not a PDF? Wait a second. It's somewhere. Oh, this needs to move. One second, let me move it. It's in the wrong place, sorry. So, um, because I think it's kind of, this is something that you guys can do first and, and you don't need my um, video to do this part, okay? So like I said, this is sort of separate from the next thing that I'm going to talk about. Okay. So anyway, this is the metric. So this is, this is kind of just a little extra practice in doing some metric conversions. Okay. Um, so if you look at the assignment, the assignment is basically to upload the answers to these practice questions that I'm going to show you in a second. Okay. So I would just retype them in a word document and then just submit them here. Okay. Um, all right. So if you go into this folder here, I'm not really sure why I put it in a folder. It's just one PDF that's in there. But anyway, um, it's here. It's, it's, it's something that the lab itself we will do as well, but this is really just some extra practice, okay? And so there's really not much, um, I guess, explanation sort of surrounding this, which I think is okay, because again, I, I'm gonna, I'll talk about it a little bit more um, during the lab, all right? Um, so this is kind of, um, again, meant to be extra practice, but we're talking about conversions, right? Metric conversions. Um, let me, wait, let me just do one thing for a second. I think this, this might help. Let me just pull up the lab PDF to, to show you the metric part of it. I might as well introduce this quickly. Um, and then I'll go back to that. So we understand what that assignment is. Okay, so here, so now under module three, right, under lab, metric and microscope lab assignment, there's another assignment there that's definitely more involved. And basically what you're gonna be doing is completing this handout, this PDF, okay? Um, along with me when you're watching the video. So unless you watch my video demo, you're not gonna know what to fill in, okay? So it's just like you guys would have been doing this lab live, right, yourselves, and then completing that lab okay so that's what that is the beginning part of it and sorry for like not the greatest pdf but i had to use my scanner at home here which isn't great um the first part of it is metric system right so you guys see that here okay so one thing i'll ask you um in terms of metric system why do we use the metric system and why do we talk about the metric system in biology What do you think? Why don't, I mean, why do we even need to kind of talk about this? I mean, it's standard, right? So when we talk about in the United States, you know, we measure length in inches and feet. Well, you don't, you don't talk about inches and feet in the lab and in science at all, right? Um, you know, 
in Europe, they use the metric system in everyday life, right? But for us, we use the metric system really in science life, okay? So it's important um, to have a standard set of measurements, right? We just talked about putting data together and then publishing it. Well, imagine if that data that you publish, you know, one person uses one system to measure and, and another person uses another system to measure, you would never be able to compare, okay? So this is a standard set of measurements. Now, and again, we may have gone through this before and heard of it before, but basically here, this table I think is super helpful because it, so it sort of relates, um, well, it does relate units of length, okay? So meter, centimeter, millimeter, micrometer, and nanometer, okay? And so I will also say, though this table sort of helps to kind of relate these things, Sometimes it gets, it's a little confusing. Um, but bottom line is when we're talking about differences between these units, right? Let's leave centimeters out for a second. We talk about a difference between a meter and a millimeter. What's the factor um, in terms of the difference between meters, you can look in the table here, versus millimeters, right? How many millimeters are in one meter? We got there. What does milli mean? Thousand. Thousand, right? So there's a thousand millimeters in a meter. So all of these units basically differ by a factor of a thousand, okay? With the exception of a centimeter, okay? So how many centimeters are there in a meter? Here. A hundred. A hundred, okay? So Correct. So 100 centimeters in a meter, there are 1,000 millimeters in a meter. How many micrometers or microns are there in a meter? 1,000, right, with three extra zeros on there. Okay, so it's, it's basically, we're, we're over here now, right? Um, well, it doesn't really show it that way. So it shows you this way now, 10 to the 6. So it's 10 to the 6, right? Six zeros. Um, and the nanometer is 10 to the ninth. Okay, so there's a couple things going on here. Um, and usually I divide, like I spend a whole week in lab on metric system, okay, and going over conversions. So I will say that you may need to spend some time on this on your own. It really depends on your background and how much you've had with this. Because um, there's a couple things going on, right? There's scientific notation, um, there's conversions, there's metric units that we may not really not have used before, okay? So that's why I kind of have that first assignment that kind of focuses on these conversions. I will also say there are other resources like Khan Academy. There's other um, resources that will go through conversions with you, okay? So like I said, a lot of times, I spend a lot of times with students one-on-one -on -one or, or, or with groups or whatever going over this, okay? So like I said, you may need to spend that extra time. If you feel like you want me to explain it a little bit more or go over it with you, then email me and we'll set up a time to do that, all right? Um, I'm not gonna keep going further with this in this group setting because, um, I mean, I'll sort of lose, lose people, okay? So look at it, read, you know, you can start off by kind of reading this, where you're filling this stuff in. Like I said, I'm gonna go through this in the video, okay? So you will be able to, your assignment, that second assignment for the metric and microscope, basically you're gonna be writing in and filling these out as I go through that lab demo, okay? There will be some things that we leave out just so you know, but you'll know what those, it, those are as you go through it with my video, okay? So you need to have this PDF either printed out or you can have it electronically and be filling it out as you move through. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. And then at the end, you'll see there are also um, some review questions that I'll be due as well. So basically you're filling out this entire packet. Now you can print it out and you can write it if you want um, and then take pictures of it if that's easier. But you know what? There's also a software called Kami. Okay. And I learned this from my third grade daughter. Um, and it, but I have to say it's super helpful. Can you please go away? Why is not doing that? Um, one second. Let me just show you. Um, if it comes up. It's 1127, Mace. Sorry. Um, right, so there's this um, software, I guess it's not a software, it's kind of an app 
called Cami, where basically you can take that PDF, you put it in there and you can just write right on there. And then it actually will even save it directly as a Google doc, I think, or you can just download it as a PDF and just submit that. Okay. So it's up to you. If you like to handwrite stuff, you can do that. But using this is, I think, super helpful. And then you can just upload it. Um, you don't have to worry about taking a picture and it'll be a lot more clear. Does that, is that, are we all right with that? We, we got, we understand what we need to do. Okay. All right, cool. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure I showed you guys that. All right. Um, and so in terms of this lab, the first part of it is talks about length. Okay. Um, like I said, some of it, some of it weren't, we'll kind of skip through, but I'll let you guys know as, as you're listening to the video. Um, then we'll talk about weight, right? So like the difference between grams and milligrams. So there are a thousand milligrams in one gram, right? And so um, when you move through this lab, it asks you to do conversions as you move through. So you're able to, protect, to practice them then as well, right? So again, I don't wanna just throw all of it at you at once. It's better to kind of do it in pieces and do it as you're moving through the lab rather than just sitting and doing problems, okay? So that first assignment that I had first showed you, which I will go back to in a second, is really just practicing conversions, right? So say five grams, right? How many milligrams are in five grams, right? It's things like that. So how many? How many milligrams in five grams? What do you think? There's a thousand milligrams in a gram, right? So if you got five grams, 5,000, right? But then you also have to be able to go the other way. So if I told you, you have, um, you know, 500 milligrams and I asked you then how many grams is that? Instead of adding zeros, your decimal place is moving the other way, okay? And so that actually is a good segue going back into that other handout, all right? So if we go back to this, this practice handout, that's essentially what it's doing. It's just saying, if you're talking about starting with a larger unit, right, versus a smaller unit, one, you're gonna move decimal places to the right or you're gonna add zeros. The other one, you're gonna go to the left or basically move that decimal place and make that number smaller, okay? So, so again, the first assignment is really just practicing these conversions. And you can see you're talking about length, volume, and mass, but it's all the same, same thing, okay? Um, factor of a thousand, pretty much, except we have centimeters sort of thrown in there. Uh, but for the most part, it's a factor of a thousand, right? So if you look here, it says 0 0.0018 kilometers or kilometers, right? Um, is really 0.18 right? 0.18 meters, okay? Because um, you're one, two, three, okay? So those three decimal places, right? Which is a factor of a thousand. So like I said, take a look at this. If you feel like you are totally lost and you're like, um, what the heck's going on? Let me know and I can help you out, okay? Um, but like I said, look up some other resources, some videos that might, might help you. You may be like totally fine with this because you've done it many times and that's fine too. But I do find there's kind of um, usually a large spread. There's some people that are like super, this is so super easy and others that find it a little more difficult, okay? If you find it difficult, do not get discouraged. Just maybe walk away, come back to it. You'll get it, okay? Um, with that said, it's not like our whole course is like based on the conversions. Okay. And, and you may say, I hate math, you know, whatever. Okay. That's fine. This is going to be one small part of your lab exam. It's not like the whole course or anything like that. So don't freak out. All right. That's another thing that I usually have to tell people. Um, but honestly, it's really just a matter of, of moving decimal places. Okay. So here, um, I'll just, so these are the, these are the ones that you're going to put up for the assignment, these practice conversions. Okay. So just retype them up and submit them. So for instance, 2.3 meters. Okay. To centimeters. Okay. So we know there are a hundred centimeters in a meter, right? And we're going, we're starting with a larger unit, moving to a smaller unit. Okay. Um, so our, we're going to add zeros on here. 
right? So this would be, and it's only two, it's two decimal places or two zeros. So we move the decimal place once, right? And then one more. So it's 230 centimeters, okay? Um, so, and then just, you know, just be careful because again, usually it's a factor of a thousand, but if we're throwing centimeters in there, um, and if we're moving from like millimeters to centimeters, slightly different. Let me just show you one thing, okay? All right, so sorry. So I will go through this in the lab video as well, but if you guys, and this is gonna be reversed when I show you, but um, I'll, I'll do some measurements here um, and, and going between centimeters and millimeters, all right? So this is a small little ruler here that basically is 15 centimeters, okay? And then if you look at the little tiny lines that are in between these centimeters here, you can see that there are 10, there's 10 millimeters in a centimeter, okay? So, um, this is saying 69 millimeters, well, how many centimeters, right? So millimeters is a smaller unit, right? You can fit 10 millimeters in one centimeter, okay? So 69 millimeters to a centimeter, you're not going to be adding a zero here, right? You're going to basically be moving that decimal place back, okay? So 69 millimeters is 6.9 centimeters. All right. Okay. So I will leave the metric system at that. All right. So I, I gave you a little bit of an introduction. Um, like I said, sometimes it takes just a little bit of time on your own. All right. So that first assignment is this. You're going to be putting up these practice problems. Does anyone have any questions right now? Um, so for the metric system mm -hmm. lab, uh, it says to like write the write the answers on the practice practice sheet. So would the practice sheet be considered that, that metric system lab assignment? Yeah, so this one, the metric system lab assignment, correct, is just that one, right? So if you click on in here, that's where that PDF is, what I just showed you, right? So correct, you're just basically uploading, you're writing these out. So all of these problems you write on a Word document and that's what you're submitting. Does that make sense? Yes, thank okay. you. Cool. Yep, you got it. And then the next, the next assignment, the metric and microscope assignment, is that entire PDF, okay, that you're going to be completing along with my lab video. If you don't watch my video, you will not be able to complete that, um, that lab, okay? So that's this one here, okay? Metric and microscope lab assignment, like I showed you, basically tells you complete laboratory two in its entirety. Right. And then again, remember, I put the PDF here. That PDF is also uh, right next to it on Moodle as well. OK, any other any other questions? I don't know why I just downloaded that again, but um, I also don't know why it's showing it that way. Um, any other any other questions with that about that, guys? No. So for the microscope and what, I, what I'm going to do for the microscope, just so you guys know, I brought a microscope home with me. Um, I may have, eventually I'm probably gonna have to go into the lab to do some of these, but for this one, I'm gonna try to do from home. Once I look in the microscope, I'm basically gonna use my cell phone video so that you guys can see what I see in the microscope, okay? And that's the way we're gonna, we're gonna see how that works out, right? I'll, I'll give you a, a heads up that it's probably not gonna be perfect, but I think um, it will do, do its job. Um, and I think it's better than just watching some random video. At least we have a little bit, um, we're sort of following along and filling out as we go. Okay, so everything I think you need is there. Like I said, I will put up the recording um, for, um, let me stop the share. I'll put up the recording for chapter three, definitely by the end of the day today, probably in the next hour or two. And then, um, I will, I will also put up the video for the lab by, by tomorrow as well, okay? And then I'll start putting up the recordings for the next chapter. So again, remember, you need to make sure you're keeping up with the assignments. And just basically, if you're not sure of a due date, click on the assignment, it'll show the due date, right? Um, 
but we, you know, most of these assignments, all of them are due next week. So for the lab assignments, I have them due on Thursday. I believe I have like the homework assignments for the chapters due on Tuesday. Okay. Any questions, guys? No? All right, well, so then I will leave you guys to go to work, right? Make sure you listen to those recordings, get the assignments done. There is a quiz also on chapters one through two, um, chapters one and two. Again, that's due on Tuesday. I have by 12 o'clock, I'm gonna change that by 11 because that's our meeting time. Oh, next Tuesday, we're gonna meet at 10.30 instead of 11. I have a meeting at 11 that they just told me about. Um, so it's only just for next Tuesday, okay? Otherwise, we're meeting at 11. I said that in the email. Um, so I will basically change those dates just so everything's due by class time. Um, okay, so homework assignments, that quiz is due. Um, let me see if I'm missing anything else. And then basically, you know, we're moving on to that next set of modules. Yeah, then I do have another quiz on chapters three and four um, that will be for that next following week. Okay, um, and then exam on chapters one through four won't be next week, but it'll be the week after. Um, or maybe kind of might start next weekend, kind of moving into Monday or Tuesday of that following week. So just a heads up, again, if we're not keeping up on it, these exams are gonna come up quick, okay? So exam one, I'll give you the exact dates, but it may be available maybe say starting Friday of next week, right? Or like I said, on the weekend, moving into that following week. All right, but then we're sort of simultaneously starting those next modules as well. All right, any questions, guys? No? All right, so take care, guys, get to work, and then just be on the lookout for the lab video and then the recorded lecture for chapter three. Those will be up soon. If you have any questions, I'll stay on for a few minutes if there are any individual questions. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a good weekend. You too. Thanks. Yeah.